Okay, today I'm actually pretty nervous because I will be doing the GCSE paper 1H and this is the one from June 2022. GCSE is the exam for high school students in the UK. I teach calculus and algebra here in the United States and this is the first time I'm going to solve these questions. I hadn't seen the questions besides the time I print them out and prepare for this, of course. So let's see how it goes. But that's that though. Since I didn't work this out, if I make any mistakes, I wouldn't know, all right? I'm just gonna solve it. I'm, I don't even have the answer key with me. So you guys can also let me know how many marks I get uh, at the end of the video. And um, yeah, I know there's some geometry, some probability questions. So we'll see. I, I know many of you guys want me to do the A-level paper later on, okay? Today just GCSE. And anything else I have to tell you? Oh yeah, no calculator, I like that, right? No calculator test, so that's nice. Uh, I don't think, okay, let's just go ahead and get started, right? Okay, so here is the first question. It looks pretty good. We are going to solve, and I'm not going to write down the whole question, I'm just write down the things that's important. 7x minus 27 is less than 8, right? So I will just have to add a 27 on both sides. So I will also go over this with you guys. The test is like 1 hour and 30 minutes, but let's see. That's 35. Yeah, and then divide both sides by 7. x is less than 5. Yay, that's it. I believe that's it. And have the first two marks, I believe. <laughs> if I get this wrong, I, I don't know what to say. All right, number two, write 124 as a product of its prime factors. So 124, uh, I will just do like this. So I will ask myself, what time so is equal to 124? We know four times 31, yeah? And then four is two times two. So this right here, I will just write it as two squared. 31 is a prime number, by the way. So we don't have to continue and that's it. And yeah, that's the first two, another two marks. So that's very nice. Okay, now question number three. So let me erase the ball, of course. I'm not going to edit the video, so I'm just going to erase this and I want to have more space. So let me also erase this right here as well. All right, so it says, I'll read the question for you guys though. A delivery company has a total of 160 cars and vans, okay? And then the ratio between the number of cars and the number of vans is three to seven. So I will put this down. So I will put down the total is 160 and then we have cars to fence. So C to V and that is 3 to 7. I haven't used this notation for a long time, by the way. Each car and each fan uses electricity or diesel or petrol. Actually, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I will, you know how it is. If you don't know in the map, just look at that vocabulary and just stop the question anyway. Okay, what problems with percent? That's tough. One over eight of the cars uses electricity, right? Electricity. And then 25% which is just one over four because if you use fraction, let's just use fractions all the way of the cars uses, oh, it's not, uh, use diesel. And the rest, uh, use, but I really don't know what that is, but anyway, Okay, work out the number of cars. So this thing. So let's see how many cars that we have first, right? So 
uh, I'm not sure how people will do it, like the format, but like the way I will do it is, okay, we have uh, C over V equals 3 over 7, put it as a fraction, and because the total is 160, so you can do C plus V is equal to 160, and then we want to solve for cars at least, right, just, just focus on the cars. So we can put V equals 160 minus C, and then put it here, so we are looking at C over 160 equals 3 over 7, no, minus C. This times this 7C, this times that is 3 times 160 is 480, and then minus 3C, and then 10C is equal to 480, C is equal to 48. I feel uh, this is the long way to do it. Here, 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 10 is 100, 160 divided by 10 is 16, times 3 is 48. Why didn't I do that? I think this is how I used to teach algebra. So I'll do this anyway. C is 48. Good. Now, 1 eighth of 48. So times 48. So six cars uses electricity. So that's six. And then 1 fourth of 48. That's 12. All right. So this plus that is 18 already. That means the rest is... 48 minus 18, so we have a total of 30 cars uses this thing. Yeah, so that should be okay. Oh, it's five marks. Yo, this is five marks. Yeah, so I shall, I shall, I shall be okay. All right, number four. Let's see. I'm erasing the board as well though, so if I'm taking like a long time for this video, you have to account for like the time that I'm erasing the board, okay? And plus, I, I'm also explaining. Anyway though, number four, A. Eh? Write 1.63 times, okay, 1.6, so this is the scientific notation, times 10 to the negative three, as an ordinary number, so I'll just do this, right? So just move the decimal three times to the left. So usually I will just put like a few zeros before, and it was like right here, right? And then just move it one, two, three, like this. And this is an extra zero, so I'll box this. So that will be the answer for that. And of course, if you don't, perhaps I'll do it like this. Yeah, something like that. So that's my answer for that. Okay, good. Part B says we are going to write 438000 in standard form. I, I thought this is in the standard form already. Um, Okay, so part C says we have scientific notation and then we want the answer in standard form. So I am assuming standard form means scientific notation. So it makes sense, right? Because the first one you write it as a regular number and then right here you want to write it as a scientific notation. So just do it. So one, two, three, four, five. The first number has to be in between of one and 10. Yeah, and then we move the decimal five times to the left. So multiply by 10 to the positive fifth power because that number is big, yeah? So, yay. C, work out, okay. Yeah, because it makes sense because for C, we want the answer in standard form, which is scientific notation. That's how we call it here. So four times 10 to the third power times six times 10 to the negative five. Okay, I shall be able to get this, plus this is four marks, okay. So this times that is 24, times 10, and now for this and that, we have to add the exponents. Three plus negative two, 
that's the answer. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. But this is not it yet, be careful. Here, we have 24.0. We have to move this one time to the left, and then we get this as 2.4 times. Well, if you move it to the left one time, you have to add 1 to the exponent, it's like multiplied by 10. So you add 1 to this, you have 10 to the negative 1. Ah. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Cool. Okay. So far, so good. Now, number 5 is about a geometry question. So, let's see. So here is number five, and then we are going to have one hexagon and one pentagon, and they are both regular. So number five, it looks like this. I will draw a picture real quick. So this is the regular hexagon, and then we are going to put a regular pentagon like so, something like this. And then here is the X in degrees I assume right so just that three marks okay so you have to remember the formula and if you would like you can also just uh, prove it right around the spot when we have a regular hexagon you this is hex hexagon yeah six sides of hexagon you can just do one two three so you see that we have a total of one two three four four triangles so the angle sum inside is just going to be 4 times. Each triangle is 180 degrees. So right here we get 720 degrees. And now for each angle inside, let's say right here, okay, we can just divide by 6 because we have a total of 6 of them. So each angle is 120 degrees. So that's 120. Now we will do the same thing for the pentagon. For the pentagon, we will have one, two, three. The formula is just the number of sides minus minus two all the time. So for that one, we do three times 180 and then divide it by five. By the way, all the angles are equal, so you just divide it by five. That is 540 divided by five. This is 108. Okay, so this angle must be 108. Now, the whole thing here, 120 plus 108 plus x degrees must be 360 degrees, right? So, we can just do 360. I'll just put down x is equal to 360 minus 120 and then minus 108. So, that's 240 minus 108. We have 1. 32. So x should be 132 degrees. Since I didn't put on the degrees, I'm not going to put on degrees here. And then finally, I'll put on degrees here. Just like that. All right. So far, so good. We have a total of 21 questions. All right. Okay. Number six. Oh, we have a parabola and then we're going to fill in the table so this right here shouldn't be too bad number six so y equals x squared minus 3x plus 1 and then we have to follow the direction right so follow the just use the table so we have x and y and then negative 1 to 4 so negative 1 0 1 2 3 4 and we cannot use a calculator, so we have to just do the work. By the way, this and that are given, so that's quite nice. Now, when x is negative 1, you plug in, so let's do this in your head. Negative 1 is plugging, you get 1. This times that is going to be past this 3, so it's 4 plus 1, we get 5. And then plugging 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 6 is negative 2, plus 1, we get negative 1. Yes. 3 in here is 9, minus 9 is 0, and we get 1. Yes. You know what the last one? I guess it's going to be 5. Take a look. Plugging 4 is 16. 16 minus 12 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Yes. 
because I noticed that like, the vertex is at negative b over 2a, so negative negative negative, negative 3 over 2 is 1.5. The vertex is somewhere in here, so it's symmetrical. Yay. So that's the first part, two marks. Now, we are going to draw the graph, okay? And then they gave us the graph paper, but I don't have that, so I will just make a sketch for negative 1 to 4. Okay, negative 1 to 4, so let's see, I need to go up to 5. So something like this, I think should be okay. So let's say negative 1 is here, and then let's say 5 is here. All right, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, yeah, and then uh, let's do it again. Sorry. All right, negative one, and then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You don't need a five actually. And then negative one. Okay, negative one, five. So we have here zero, one is here. One, negative one is here. Two, negative one is here. And then 3, 1 is here, 4, 5 is here, <laughs> but this is a parabola. Do not just do like this, okay? No. Go ahead, connect the dots. Make sure it's like going down a little bit and then come back up like this. Let's fix this a little bit. Make sure you have the vertex right there. So that should earn me another two marks. Now, use the graph. We are going to estimate the solution to the equation. This is part C, x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So we are looking for the x-intercept, which is here and here. And hopefully, <laughs> this is 0 and 1. So I will say the first one, it should be approximately at 0 0.5, right? Please, I don't want the answer to be like 0 0.4. Haha, <laughs> got you. No, please not. 0 0.5 should be a reasonable answer for this. And then another answer is this. And this is between 2 and 3. And I will just take it as the middle value, right? So I estimate it as 1, uh, 2.5. Yeah, that should work. Please don't be anything else. Six marks. All right. So let me know who is the adding the number of marks for me. If I make a mistake, just subtract whatever. I, I, I don't know the answer. I, I don't have the answer key. I never look at the answer, so I don't know. But for the end level, it's scarier though. This one so far seems okay. All right, number seven, we have two cubes, A and B. And I will just draw the picture first. So number seven, we have A. Looks like this. Each side is three centimeters, and then B is a little bit bigger. It's just each side you have four. So this is four centimeters. Okay, it says the mass is eighty-one g for the first one. So I'll say M A is equal to eighty-one. Uh, gram and then the other one MB is equal to 128G and then we are going to work out the density the ratio of the density of cube A and cube B we, we want the density so Oh, write this down. Density. Density. Doctor, can I even spell this? Density of A to density of B. I noticed that I didn't have the N here. Alright, how do I compute the density? The mass is just the mass. Density, you will have to divide by the volume. So for this right here, the volume is V A. For this right here, it's just 3 to the third power, right? Which is 27. And then right here, V B, 
is going to be 4 to the third power, which is 64. And you don't really have to work, whatever, cm cube, cm cube. The ratio, you don't really have to have the unit at the end. So the density for the first one, I will just do 81 over 27. And then I will have to have this 128 over 64. All right. Now, this right here, reduce, you just get 3. And this right here, you reduce, you just get 2. Oh, it's actually pretty nice. 3 to 2. I thought there's a way that you can just do like this and that, but I think, it, of, of course, the math matter, right? So, yeah, that should, that should, that should do it. Not bad. All right, number seven done. Now, number eight, uh, number eight. So we have a table and uh, we have the frequency table plus the stuff on the side. It's an interval. All right, I'm gonna write down the, I'm going to write down the question so we can all see what it is. So the first column is we have however many centimeters for snow, all right? So this is the amount for snow measured in centimeters. And then this right here is the frequency table, right, the frequency. And we have a few of them. So the first one is we go from zero to 10. That's snow and that's nine, including the 10. The frequency for that is 8. And at the end, we want to find out the estimate for the mean amount of the snow per day. Now, how do I... Hold on. I don't just want to give up because, to be honest, I don't remember how to find the mean from a frequency table. <laughs> but let me just write this down first and now we'll think about how I'll do it. So this right here is measured in centimeters. Um, so I think, right, I think what we are going to do is you just pick the middle value here. Like I'm really not sure. So the eight is the number of days. So this is, so we have eight days and eight days the snow is in between of zero and 10. I believe you just take S to be the middle values. So this is just uh, five, and then this is 15, and then this right here is just 25, and then this right here is 35, and this right here is 45. And you just multiply them, and you divide it by the number of days. I think that's how you do it. So I will just do that. If I get it wrong, I, I don't know. So let me just do it like this, five times eight, which is 40 and then 15 times 10, I get 150, and then 25 times seven. This right here is 175, and then 35 times two, this is 70, and then 45 times three, that should be 135. And then that's one, one, five, 10, seven, seven, three so seven and then i have the two so two one three four five so 570 and then the average i'll just put on the average should be i'll just put approximately 570 over 30 days so this and that can so it's 19 centimeters per day yeah, I think this is reasonable. I really forget about the form formula for that. Three marks, right? Three marks. Done. Now, number nine. One of 3D geometry. 
3D geometry. So a cube is placed on top of uh, another cube. And then in the diagram, it will have like a solid. So I'm just going to draw the picture real quick for you guys. So we have a big cube, seven, six, and five. Right, so this is seven, and this is six, and this is five. All centimeters, so I'm not going to write that down. And then we have something like this. Okay. And on top of that, we are going to put another cube. And th that that is oh, this is just a box, so it's not a cube. A cube is meant to be all three sides being equal. And then this is another box, but this one is a cube because it's all three sides being equal to each other. So that's that. So this is four, and everything is centimeter. Not the best picture, but okay. Okay, we're going to find the total to surface area of the solid. So, surface area. First, though, let's just count. Let's just count. This is three marks. Let's, let's just count. We have one, two, three, the one in the, on the back, three, four, right? Four of them around the side, and then one more on the top. So, on the top, we have five because the base, they are grouped it, so this part right here, you don't have area, right? So we have five times four to the third power. No, 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 four to the second power, four to the second power. And then after that, we will have to add, uh, let's see, here we have, let's just put it down right here. Yeah? The base right here is 42. And then the one on the back is seven, right? This is seven times five is 35. And then this side is six times five, so which is 30. This right here is also six times five, which is 30. And then we also have another one in the front, right? So it's 35. So I'm just going to do like this, two times 35, and then plus two times 30, and then plus just one for the base, which is 42, okay? And now, the tricky part might be this right here. So that part, what we will have to do is seven, seven times four, seven times six, which is 42, right? Seven times six, which is 42. But you have to subtract that Boudou part. So minus four times four, so minus 16. 42 minus 16 is 28. So this right here is 28. So that part, perhaps I just put this down in like red. That part is uh, 28, so we add 28. Okay, so four squared 16 times five is 80. So this is 80. And this right here is 70. And this right here is 60. And then 42, and then 28. 28 plus 42 is 70. So this right here is 70. So 70, 70 is 140, plus that is 200, so 228. Why am I talking about 280, 280, 280. And the unit for that is centimeter square because this is uh, centimeters. All right, so that, that should do it. I'm drawing the pictures though, that's why it take me it's taking me a while, so. And I really wanted to do this on my whiteboard, so that's why. Okay, that, now, number 10. There's another frequency table for number 10. So the table shows the information about profit made on each day for 100 days. Oh, so we have to just make the um, cumulative frequency table. Well, this is some statistic stuff. And cumulative just means that you add them up, I believe. <laughs> All right, so for number 10, I'm just going to put down the answer that we need for that. So here we have two columns as well, just like the one that we saw earlier. So this right here is the profit. 
And this right here is the cumulative frequency. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so zero and 50, zero, eh? It's up to 100, and this, oh, I see, I see. It's from zero all the way. Okay, so this right here is not bad at all. So, and then you go to 150, and then you go to, 200 and then you go to to 50 and lastly you go to 300 all right so I, I just have to add out all these numbers right so you can take a look or look at the PDF on your own so I'm going to just write down the answer for the first one we have 10 and the next one is 10 plus 15 which is 25 and then plus 25 to that is 50 and then plus 30 to that is 80 plus 5 is 85 and then plus 15 we have 100 so that should do it okay but part b says we have to draw the cumulative frequency graph do they mean the bar graph Wait, you have this x values for the first column, and then how do you make a graph for this thing? So b, and then we have this, right? So this is 0 to 300. Why is this 300? Oh yeah, 0 to 300. Okay, sure. 0, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> you know by doing this I'm not getting partial credit at all because this thing is already on the paper <laughs> yeah, How do you draw the frequency graph for this thing? Do I just go like 10 with a bar? Or do, do I just do like this? I, I, I think this is going to be my best guess, okay? I think it's just like a bar graph. So from 0 to 50, I will go to 100. But it doesn't make sense. Oh, I should be looking at... Am I supposed to be looking at the frequency, but it says the cumulative frequency graph. So, okay, I'm going to write this down. Frequency graph. Uh, I, I I'm just going to do like this. So from zero to fifty is ten, and then from fifty to one hundred is twenty five. So I will just go up. So estimate it, right? So this right here is meant to be at twenty five, and then from here I will just go up to fifty. That doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense because. I cannot just How do I draw the cumulative frequency graph? Okay, I don't know I will have to look that up on, on this thing because 
still I don't remember what what the cumulative frequency graph is for this. All right, part C, it says use the graph to estimate the number of days on which the profit was less than 125 pounds. So we want days so that the profit is less than 125. I am just going to come here because from here 0 to 150 this is the profit right in the middle it's of course right the middle is 125 so I will just look for the middle of this and that so the middle of this is 25 plus 50 divided by 2 75 over 2 which is 37.5 <laughs> I don't actually I don't know about this one either. Estimate the number of days. So I'm gonna take a guess. So suppose I'm like doing this like <laughs> if I'm really like taking this test. I don't know. So I'll put a question mark, right? So I, I really don't know how to make that work. And then part D says use your graph to find and estimate for the interquartile range, I am going to give up on this because interquartile, interquartile. I believe that Q three minus Q four, right? No, Q three minus Q one for the interquartile. Oh, I have to look up on this as well. But like D, so interquartiles. Oh, IQR, interquartile range, okay? But that doesn't help. I know the abbreviation, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it from a frequency graph or a table. I know it should be Q3 minus Q1, right? Interquartile range is just, uh, it's like this. So you have the minimum, you have the maximum, and you have Q1, Q2, Q3, and uh, you just do Q3 minus Q1, and this is the min, this is the max. But I have no idea how to do it from here. So, uh, okay, fine. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to do it. Yeah, for, for, for stats, it's that if you don't know that, there's no way for you to think about it and figure it out. This, it's not possible. So it's just that if I ask you what's my birthday, that you wouldn't know either. And then I will give you like, five years if you try to think about it you still cannot think about it and then know what my birthday is that kind of thing so all right number 10 no that was number 10 now number 11 number 11 okay so you have some sweet in the bag and then the sweets are lime flavor, strawberry flavor. Okay, so you have lime, strawberry, and orange. Oh, this is probability, okay. All right, so we have a triple bridge. I don't know how do you would call it. So lime, two strawberries, two orange. How do you write? This is orange, all right. Is nine to four to X. And then, you are going to take a random sweep from the bag. The probability that you get a lime flavor is 3 over 7. So probability of lime gets equal to 3 over 7. Figure out the x value. Alright, so this right here shouldn't be too bad. So one way you can do it is you can add all this, right? So 9 plus 4 plus x is like the total. And then line is 9. So I think I can just do this. 9 plus, sorry, 9 over, over that, 9 plus 4 plus x. That should give us 3 over 7. 
I'm just going to solve this equation and that shall do the work. So 13 plus x. So cross multiply, this times that is 63. This times this is 39. And this times that is plus 3x. Yeah, and then minus 39 on both sides. 63, 3, so it's 24, equals 3x. So x should be equal to 8. Yeah, so that should do it. That should do it. OK, number 12. Um, I'm going to erase this right here as well, number 12. Zero point one one seven with two dots. I am going to assume that this is the same as saying we have zero point one one seven with a bar on the top, meaning meaning zero point one and then one seven one seven one seven da da da. This is the notation that I'm used to. I um, don't know about the dot notation. The dot notation reminds me of the derivative. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to take it as this and then work it out. So this right here is not so bad. I'm just going to rewrite it as this as 0 0.1 plus 0 0.017 with two dots right here. Okay? So 0 0.1 ready as a fraction is 1 over 10. And for this ready as a fraction, you are just going to put down 17. So I'll just write this down. This is 17. Uh, how should I write it? In, uh, how should I code the color? I just put on it 17 dot dot. I'll do this. We have 17. And because we have two digits repeating, we can just divide it by 99. Yeah? But we have a zero here, so you kind of divide it by 10. So you put another zero here. So that should do it. And now we just have to work this out. So for this, I will multiply by 99. I'll multiply this by 99. So 99 over 990 plus 17. So I'll do it like this. This is 116 over 990. And we can reduce that by 4. 4 goes into this. 29 times 4 goes into this 2 8 6 No, it does not. It's not 4. 4 does not. Because the last two digits is not divisible by 4. So do it by 2. So we get 5 8 and then we get 4 9 5. Let me just double check. Yeah, that should do it. 58 over 495. Yes. Okay, number 13, we have a geometry question. So I will take some time to draw the picture for you guys as well. So right here, we have a right angle triangle is formed by the diameter of all of these three things. And then we're going to find the area of A, B, and C. And oh no, it's a proof question. We had, oh, okay. Wait, that's a Pythagorean theorem proof. Oh, wow. You pretty much have to prove the Pythagorean theorem. But check this out, though. Check this out. No, 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 it's not you prove the Pythagorean theorem, but just, just watch. So. We have this, and then you will have a semicircle. You have a semicircle, and then you also have a semicircle here. That's a horrible semicircle. And our goal is to show that this is A, oh, just A, B, and C. So we want to show. area 
So let's say A is the area plus B is equal to C. This is the area, right? Oh, one thing I have a problem with this is that why didn't they call this one C so that I can label this hypotenuse as C? Why did they do that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is just wrong. What? Okay, 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 sorry. A is the biggest, right? So it's the area of A, area of A equals the area of B plus the area of C. <laughs> All right, so we can do some labeling here. Let's say this is little a, this is little b, and this is little c. Yeah? One thing to know is that by the Pythagorean theorem, in a very unusual rate, Pythagorean theorem, in this particular case, we will have a squared equals b squared plus c squared, right? Okay, and then for a, this right here is just going to be uh, half of this square because it's a semicircle and then you divide it by 2. That's all. This right here is 1 half times pi times the area, the radius is just half of this, right? Half of this, so it's a half. Oh, it's half of it. A is the diameter, so I need a half of A square. And then the rest should be straightforward 1 half half semicircle pi r square r here is half of b square and then plus one half pi half of c square now everybody has pi over two right so you just can get rid of that so here we're just focusing on one over four a square plus is equal to oh you know what i cannot i Technically, I cannot do this as a proof. Technically, I will have to just start from the left hand side and then show it. Oh, okay, 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 good. All right, let me do it again. So, I want to show this. Now, here is the proof. So, for area of A, this right here is one half, right, one half times pi times the radius, which is one half A squared. And then this right here is one half pi, and then this right here is of course one over four uh, a square. Let me just write it down here: one over four pi, one over one over two pi, one over four a square. So this is one over okay. Check this out, check this out. So I will multiply this out, so it's 1 over 4, and then we have the a squared, and then thanks to the Pythagorean theorem, I will plug in this right here. So this is 1 over 2 pi times 1 over 4 parentheses, we replace that with b squared plus c squared, and then distribute the 1 over 4, and perhaps I'll also distribute that as well. So it's 1 over 2 pi times 1 over 4 b squared, and then plus 1 over 2 pi times 1 over 4 c squared. Haha, -ha. not so much prettier proof. And then technically, you should put this down as 1 over 2 pi, and then parentheses 1 half b squared plus 1 over 2 pi times 1 over 2 c square and ladies and gentlemen that is the area what did I didn't why didn't I capitalize the area the, the A? by the way this is capital this is area of B plus area of C hey you deserve a box for proof yay <laughs> So uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. I thought we have to prove the Pythagorean theorem, but no. Depends on who was given.
Let me make sure that my right. Oh, 50 minutes. Yo. Okay, number 14. Here is a speed time graph. So like this. And then first you want to work out an estimated gradient. Gradient is the slope at t is equal to 2. So here let's say this is where the 2 is. And we want a gradient. So that means you should draw the tangent line. So it's like this, like that. But of course you should do it on the paper here to make it more clear. So if you do it like that, okay. I, I, I don't like this kind of estimation questions because now I messed it up because I have a marker and then I'll try one more time. I'll draw a better one. So I think, I think if you draw it nicely, this right here will give you one. And if you draw it nicely, you end up with four and then this right here should give you about five All right so just draw it and you shall see it now we can just find the slope between these two points so um well two points so it's four comma five and the other one is zero comma one so x1 y1 x2 y2 the slope is m which is going to be y2 minus y1, so 1 minus 5. Why do you, oh, doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. You can call this one x2, y2, y2, doesn't matter. And then 0 minus 4. That's negative. Seriously? Okay, whatever. The answer is just 1. Well, yeah, 45 degrees. That That's, that's okay. Now, what does the area under the graph represent? This right here is a speed graph. All right, but to be careful though. Um, in this case, speed It's the distance, but it's a total distance travel because speed is, is always positive, well, not negative, I, was, I should say, and the area under the curve is just the total distance. If you have the velocity, then it would be the changing distance. So this right here, the area under the, under the speed graph, this right here is the total distance traveled. And since it doesn't give us like a time interval, I'm, I think this should be okay, all right? So that should, that, that's it. Just two parts, number 14. Okay, number 15. I, I'm gonna erase the ball first, I can do that. I don't know, number 15. All right, number 15. A, B, C are three points such that A, B is equal to this. So this is number 15. So we have A, B, uh, I assume, I believe that means the factor. It's three, A, both this. So this is a unit factor, I believe, and then plus four, B. And then A, C is 15a plus 20b and then part a we have to prove that a b c these three points are collinear or lie on a straight line So 
the reason I'm like writing down the questions because I want time to think. I know I'm trying to get partial credit for this. Okay, I don't know how to prove it. I know how to explain it. It's like, if you look at this as factors, so this is a constant multiple, right? It's just multiple by five. I'm going to assume that's enough. I'm not entirely sure that how, how, how much details how, how, how much detail that you have to provide? I, I, I will say, notice AC, okay, which is 15A plus 20B. And then I'm just going to factor out a 5. And then this right here will give us 3A plus 4B. And that's 5 times a b i i think i am i'm i'm misunderstanding something it's like i have a b c so a b is this and then a c is that now what else do i need do i need to prove i'm only proving that a c is five times longer than a b and they have the same slope does that mean i can prove they are on the same line by doing this i uh, i i don't know i i don't know how much detail we have to do I, I don't know. I don't know. So I'll put a question mark there. I don't know if that's enough or not. Now, <laughs> par B, we have DEF. Now we have DEF. Right? DEF. They are on a straight line such that D E is 3E plus 6F and then EF is negative 10.5 E minus 21F <laughs> Okay, find the ratio They're on the same straight line uh, So they're on the same straight line So it's kind of like a continuation from there And notice that this is negative 3 This is negative 3.5 times that. Cool. So I will just put a note. Negative 3.5 times. Sorry. I shall say EF is negative 3.5 times DE. So I. I'm pretty sure that was all I need to show earlier. Hopefully, hopefully, all right. And for this right here, uh, we are going to find the ratio. Oh, they like to ask ratio questions. The length of DE to the length of the length of DF to the length of DE. So I will just do like this for the length, or maybe use absolute value. Doesn't matter. Let's put absolute value. Let's put absolute value. Length, length, okay, length. <sighs> Wait, how do I find the how do I find the length? Oh, 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 oh. You can treat this as x and y, so 3 and 6, you can just look at that as you go here 3 times and then you go up 6 times, so you have a point, so it's like this. So the length for that is just by the distance formula or the uh, modulo, modulus formula. So this right here, I will just do, I will just do a square root of 3 squared plus 6 squared. <laughs> Actually, I don't know to be honest. <laughs> and DE, I will just do this square plus that square. So, 
So that's nine plus. Then how how do you find the ratio? Can ratio be like square root numbers? No. Why am I doing? I already know this. I don't need that. Hold on. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I I think this is just some algebraic thing I forgot. Don't do this, Steve. Don't do this. It works, right? It does work, right? It will work, right? But this should be easy. We have three, six, and then this right here. Oh, it's a different direction. So it's like it's like that. Okay, negative ten point five and negative twenty one. So we are trying to get the ratio of de. Oh, de is this. Df is this. This is df. This is df, and this is de. So I had it wrong. I had it wrong. I had it wrong. Df it should be the square root of all that stuff. Here, negative ten point five square plus negative twenty one square, and then d e is three square plus six square. If you work it out and simplify, it should work. But don't tell me the answer is just this. I I a distance is one dimension. Stop. What is EF? What am I? Wait, wait, wait. What's EF? Oh, I have the all wrong. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Oh, what am I doing for this? It's like I wrote it down wrong. I thought DE. Okay, I had it all wrong. Oh, this is so bad. All right. So this is number sixteen. Number fifteen B. So. We have d e being three e plus six f, and then d no 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 e f being negative ten point five e plus sorry minus twenty one f. So let's do this. Let's just draw a picture for it for this. So you can imagine this is the e axis and this is the f axis. That's how I interpret it. I never seen like the e and f being used like this. And d let's say is right here at the origin. And then up to e let's say this is three, and this is six. So here is e, and then we have it like this. Yeah, and then. E F, it should be going the other way, right? So E F, it should be like this. So that means we'll go to the left direction, ten point five, and then we'll go down, negative twenty one. So if you want to find the component here, that should be negative seven. This is should be negative. Seven point five because this minus that, and then minus twenty one. So six minus twenty one is negative fifteen. All right. So from here to here is negative seven point five and negative fifteen. But I want to know the ratio. I want to know the ratio of. <laughs> I want to know the ratio of this, the blue part. This is f. So this is what we want. Df, the length, so absolute value, and then ratio, and then one one de. Okay. So how much longer is it? That's all I need to know.
can I just compare the the x distance? If x is like so much longer than that, then the, this is so much longer than that, right? That's the ratio, right? So yeah, this is why I don't usually teach. So I <laughs> okay. If I'm taking the test, I will definitely skip this and then I will go do the things I know, right? <sighs> Alright, so I'm just going to do this. This much here is negative 7.5, right? This much right here is negative 7.5. And that much right here is over 3. And then I'll just reduce it. So that's... And then the... the, the, the the negative doesn't matter. So if you reduce this, this is 2.5. And if you write that as a fraction, that's 2 and 1 over 2, which is 5 over 2. So I think the answer is should be 5 to 2. Why did this take me so long? I I don't know. 5 to 2. Okay. All right, that that should that should be the answer. If I got this wrong, then how many points is that? That's five points. Well, number fifteen is five marks. Oh, that uh, the total is eighty. So that that's that's a lot. All right, please ask me something that I know how to do. Oh, probability number sixteen. So the questions will get harder. Let's see. The first ed test has two parts, a theory part and also the practical part. The probability of passing the theory part is 0 0.75. So I'll just say the probability of passing the theory part is 0 0.75. And then the probability of passing only one of the two parts so we also know only one of the two parts is 0 0.36 and two events are independent uh, so we know probability of t and theory no practical this right here would be just probability of t times probability of p practical and then this is what we want we want we want a new marker the probability of passing the practical test no I'm not talking to Siri we want probability of P So let's draw a Venn diagram. Let's draw a Venn diagram. That should be helpful. So here is the theory part, and here is the practical part. And we want only one. So that means this plus that should be 0 0.36. Right? Either this or that added, it should be 0 0.36. And we know the whole thing here is 0 0.75, right? So T right here, probability of T, the blue part right here is 0 0.75. Oh, so in fact, you know, this middle part is T and P, T and P. So we know this much, this much, it should be this minus that, yeah? So wait, no. Only one is that. Hmm. 
It doesn't say the probability of fail both of them, only one. We don't know the both. We, we do know the both is this. Oh, okay. If I can figure out this, then it's easy. Why did I give us 0 0.36 for this and that? Okay. Probability of only one. I haven't done probability for like as long as I could. Like in terms of solving questions, I, I haven't done it for so long. I used to be good at probabilities. Well, I, I thought I was good at probability. Why am I not seeing this right here? Like your first question was so easy, and right now, so what, what, what's this? So this much is 0 0.75. So that means the rest should be 0 0.25. Does that help? That means the outer piece, in not including this, so the outer piece, it should be 0 0.25, yeah? What? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I do probability of T, plus probability of P, so this plus that, minus probability of T and P, which is, they are independent, also I shall get 0 0.36, yeah? And this is, Am I double counting? Hold on. This. This. Okay, plus that. Oh, I am double counting. I shall put a 2 here. I can just plug in 0 0.75 into this. And then so for P or P, right? But let me make sure if I'm double counting or not. So, uh, this is the probability of... Uh, T or P, but this is not worst situation. This part has to be empty, so I should subtract it one more time. Okay, so I should have this. Yeah, okay. So this is 0 0.75 plus P of P minus 2 times 0 0.75, and this is uh, P of P, 0 0.36. So this is 1.5, negative, so with that is another negative. So hold on, hold on, Let, let's, let's do this, minus 0 0.75 on both sides. And then have a look, here this is like 1, like plus 1, minus 1.5. So this term and that term together we get negative 0 0.5 P of P, and that should be 75 minus 36 is 9, 3, 39, it's negative, because it's like this actually, so negative, negative 0 0.39. All right, let me double check. Okay, yes, and then, 
divided by negative 0 0.5, it's like multiplying by negative 2. Really? P of t? Oh yeah, it makes sense. So P of P multiplied by 2 is 0 0.78. That should do it. I, I, I think I did it. I just had to write it down. And I think I need to have a two, I believe. Whew. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reward myself with a new marker. I no, this I I'm pretty sure this video is like more than like I don't know how many hours, but it's done. Nice. Okay, continue. Just four more questions, and let me make sure that I'm still recording. That's oh, so one hour and 16 minutes. <laughs> okay, directly proportional. That is very nice. I'm just going to write down the equation. So first it says y is directly proportional to the square root of t. So we know y equals k times the square root of t and it says y is 15 when t is equal to 9 so we can say 15 equals some number k times square root of 9 so that's 15 equals 3k so k equals 5 I don't know if I had to find this but I just found it anyway okay that, that's that and then secondly we also know that t is inversely proportional to the cube of x so t equals okay this is k1 the first constant of proportionality t is inversely proportional so inversely means that you have a constant multiple but inversely you divide the cube of x so x cube t is 8 when x is 2 so we have 8 so this is k2 over 2 to the third power which is 8 multiply both sides by 8 k2 is equal to 64 all right so we know y equals 5 square root of t moreover we know t equals 64 over x to the third power and we are going to give a formula for y in terms of x and simplify in the simplest form so that shouldn't be too bad I'm just going to put this in there so I'm going to write it down here y equals 5 square root here is the t I'm going to just put it here 64 over x to the third power so that's 5 square root of 64 is just 8 over this right here I can simplify it as x square root of x okay and then this and that is just 40 over x square root of x but I am pretty sure that they want us to simplify this so I'm going to multiply by square root of x square root of x this right here will be 40 square root of x over this is another x times x so x x is x squared and um, there should be somewhere saying x is positive come on okay because they have this right square root of t so that means t is positive and that means this is positive implies that x has to be positive so that means this is okay so this right here should be the answer okay that was much better so so far I'm, I just do like the factor or like the probability questions and then the stats question number 18 okay we are going to work out the value of this expression so I will write that down for you guys in proper fraction no 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 it's a mixed number we have 5 and 4 over 9 this is a mixed number raised to the negative 1 over 2 
times four two over three. You know it's interesting because like in high school we don't do this anymore here in the US, like the uh, in the mixed number. Yeah, let alone of a mixed number raised to a power. We we we, we don't do that. <laughs> let's let's see. Alright, so let's just simplify each and everything. So for the first part here, five times four is five times nine is forty-five. Plus four is forty-nine over nine. And then we will have to raise that to the negative one half power. And then multiply by three times no, let's just do this like this. Three times four is twelve plus that is fourteen. Oh, it's the upside down pi, three fourteen. Anyway, over two to the negative three power. Okay, for this one, I think I'm just gonna do it on the side here, it's easier. So I'm going to no I, I will write it down some way for you guys. So forty-nine over nine to a negative one half. Use the negative to flip the inside, so I will get 9 over 49 and then the 1 half power. And the 1 half power turns into the square root. So 9 over 49. And that will give us, you know, the 9 cancel, so it's 1 over. No, just kidding. Just kidding. 9 over 49. And then we get 3 over 7. So this right here is 3 over 7. And then we multiply that by 14 over 3. Ah, now I see why that's the case. And then 2 to the negative 3 power. And then here, cancel, cancel, 1 and 2. So on the top we have 2. On the bottom we have 2 to the negative 3. So you can bring this up, I think it's easier that way. So it's 2 times 2 to the plus d3, which is 2 to the 4th power, and worked out, you get 16. It's actually a pretty nice decided number, right? Well decided number, yeah. Okay, so another algebraic equation. This one, again, shouldn't be too bad. All right, we are going to solve 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1 equals 1. And then we are going to put the answer in the, in the, form, in the, in the given form. So that shouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to start off by multiplying everybody by this and that denominator. So 2x minus 1, x minus 1. So take this times that, they cancel, so I have this times that, so that's x minus 1. Continue, take this times that, the x minus 1 cancel, I'm, I'm going to write down 3 times 2x minus 1, and this times that is just 1 times that, which is just this. Then I will multiply this out, x minus 1 plus, so we get 6x minus 3. And then for this, this times that is 2x squared, and then this times this is uh, negative 2x, and then negative x, and then plus 1. Combine like terms on the same side, this and that, 7x, and then this and that is minus 4, and then 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. We combine this and that. Now, put these two terms to the other side. So minus 7x plus 4 minus 7x plus 4. Cancel, 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 cancel. Let me write this down first. Yeah? So we get 2x squared minus 10 x and then plus 4 plus 5 equal to 0. Now, this is not factorable because they tell us that the answer has the square root of something, right? And um, we'll just use the, you can use the PQ formula. If you do the PQ formula, you get um, fractions, and then, so not so much. And you can complete the square 
But again, if you complete a square, you have to divide everybody by two. That is not going to be too nice either because you have five over two. So I'm just going to use the good old ABC quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, which is negative 10, plus minus square root. And then we have the b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times 2. So that's positive 10 plus or minus square root. All right, for this, we have 100. And then this right here is 8 times that is 40, so minus 40. So the inside is 60. And then we have over 2 times 2, which is 4. But for square root 60, we can break it down. Ready? 4 and 15, why am I, why am I worried about? I'm looking at this right here. We, we must have, we, we can actually break it down. <laughs> I'm thinking, yes, yeah, because the bottom is 2, so we must, we can factor out something. So this is square root of 4 times square root of 15. Okay, so that's 10 plus or minus, this is 2, and then that's square root of 15 over 4. On the top, factor out the 2, so we get 5 plus or minus, this 2 is out, so square root of 15, and this reduce. So finally, I will just put this down right here for you guys nicely. x equals 5 plus or minus square root of 15 all over 2 on the bottom. So that should do it. Uh, spend too much space. I, 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 I use too much space right here. All right. Yay. Two more questions. All right. Number 20. The center spelled it C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. That's also the same center. C-E-N-T-E-R. And then the center of the circle is the point. All right, it's negative one comma three. So I'm just going to try to draw the thing along the way as well. So we have negative one comma three. That's it. Negative one is here, and three is here. We have the center of the circle. But do I know the radius? I don't. The point A with six comma eight is on the circle. So six comma eight. Seriously, six comma eight. So let's say negative 1, 3. 6, 8. So I'll just say this is 6 and this is 8. Now draw to scale, of course. So we have 8 right here. And uh, oh man, it's like, why did I pick the number so big? I'm going to put it down here. Right. Negative 1, 3. 6. 8. So here is the point, and then here we'll have a somewhat like this, alright? I am not going to draw the whole circle, but you know what I mean. And here's the deal this is the radius. We are going to find an equation of the tangent line to the circle at A in give the answer in the form of uh, ax plus bx plus c is equal to zero form. a, b, c have to be integers. So here is the point, and then we want to find the tangent line. So we will have, a point. We will have the line going like this. Oh, hey, it's actually a very nice picture. I like it. So here's a, geo here's a geometric fact. The radius is going to be, ten it's going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. Yeah. So if we find a slope right here, then we can just do the negative reciprocal. So you can find the slope of the line. And then after that, we can just use the point slope form of the line to figure out the equation of this line. So what's the slope of this line here? This point is negative 1, 3. And this point here is 6, 8. So the slope 
equals this minus that, which is 8 minus 3, over this minus that, 6 minus negative 1. That is 5 over that is 7. So the slope of this right here is 5 over 7. That implies the perpendicular line will have the slope opposite sign, which is negative, and do the reciprocal, which is 7 over 5. This is the slope that we have to use, and this is the point that we are going to use. So we will just use y minus y1 equals perpendicular slope times x minus x1. Drawing the numbers, so y minus y1, which is this right here, this is x1, y1 for that point. So y1 in our case is 8 equals the perpendicular is negative 7 over 5, x minus x1, which is 6. And then just cutting this up, y minus 8 equals, this is negative 7 over 5x. This times that positive, 7 times 6 is 42, and then over 5. And then just add 8 on both sides. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. I, I, I'm so used to get the equation in the y is equal to mx plus b4. But anyway, this, and then we get negative 7 over 5x. This is the same as... 5, no, multiply by 5 and 5, so 40 over 5. So that's 82 over 5. But this is useless because we want the equation in the form that's given. <laughs> anyway, though, from here, I'm just going to multiply everybody by 5 to get rid of the fraction. So we have 5y equals negative 7x and then plus 82. So we have to move this to the other side. Usually you want the coefficient of x to be positive for like this kind of standard form. So move this here, we get 7x and then plus 5y and then minus 82 equals zero. And that's the equation of the tangent line right here. This right here, in fact, I, I talk about this in my calculus class. So you can find the equation of a tangent line to a circle. But you can do it with geometry just like that. You don't have to do the derivative. Yay, last question. So we have three circles. Each radius is four. And then we're going to find the area of the shaded region. Let's can take a look right here. I'm going to draw the circles. One, and then perhaps I'll put, no, I'll just put everything in black. Two, three. Not the best, yeah, not the best, but whatever. It's meant to. It's the it's the same circle. Okay, it's the same circle. Each radius is equal to four. So I'll just put this down. This to here is four. Right. Likewise, from here to here is also four. So the radius is equal to four four centimeters for all three circles. And the question is that we want this area here plus this area here. So how do we do it? So maybe you can find the area of this circle and then minus this portion and that portion where we can just do that and double it, right? But the key right here is that we have to find the area. It, this is not even a sector. It's If you have a straight line here, it's a sector. Like if you have it here, it would be a sector. But we have that little wedge, like a potato wedge, that kind of shape. So we have to do like two parts. So firstly, let's figure out what this is. I will call this R1. Okay, let's call the R1. So uh, R1 is going to be a sector, right? R1 is a sector. We'll just say sector 
r1 equals the formula for that is just radius times theta but the angle theta has to be in radians now what the, what's the angle here though what's the angle here that's the angle theta here okay here is four because it's the radius from here to here it also has to be four because that's also the radius but ah you see the middle one is also a circle if you connect from here to here that also has to be four because that's the radius of this circle so this right here is an equilateral triangle meaning uh, implying that theta is 60 degrees so let's do that real quick theta is 60 degrees and we can multiply that by pi over 180 degrees degrees simple cancel and then we reduce this we just get theta equals pi over 3 so r1 equals radians which so, sorry radius is 4 and then the angle theta is pi over 3 so for that we have 4 pi over 3 okay done with that but now we have to find out the little wedge so wedge i will just put it down as r2 So this right here is the wedge, like a potato wedge, wedge shape R2. And for R2, it's like this. This and that are the same, yeah? And you can just look at it, we have a, oh. We have an equilateral triangle. It's just that you have to use the sector minus the equilateral triangle to get a wedge. So R2 equals this, right? So it's pretty much the same sector from what we had earlier but we have to minus the area of the equilateral triangle. This is the sector. This pretty much is the same as R1, but perhaps I'll just write down this is the sector. Again, that is just four pi over three. Now, this is an equilateral triangle per our discussion earlier. Each one is four. And now, do you guys remember the formula for the area of the equilateral triangle? Let's do a quick proof, yeah? So if this is S, this is S, yeah? So make a cut, this is half of S. So this right here will be what? So for this right here, I'll call the H. So half of S squared plus S squared equals H. Sorry. Half of S squared plus H squared equals S squared. So that is 1 over 4s squared plus h squared equals s squared. Minus 1 over 4s on both sides. One of, minus 1 over 4s squared on both sides. h squared equals 3 over 4s squared. Take the square root on both sides. h equals square root of 3 over 2s. So we need the h, which is that, and s is 4. And the base is 4. The whole thing is 4. The h here is square root of 3 over 2 times 4, which is just 2 square root of 3. But we'll keep it like this. But the area for this is just base, 1 half base times the height, which is the square root of 3 over 2 times 4. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so for the wedge, we have 4 pi over 3. They cancel to be 1, so we will have 4 square root of 3. Really? So they cancel and then 4 square root of 3, let me just put it down here. Yo, this is not a nice number at all. All right, so what we are trying to get the region, the shady region, I'm just going to do like this. I'm going to make a cut, All right? So I will talk about the quarter circle and then minus this and minus that. So I can get this part right here. 
right? So I don't even know how to call that. I will just say this is R3. And then what we are looking for, the area of the shady region, the shaded region, based on my labeling is just equal to four of these. So four times R3. And four is four. R3 is going to be the quarter circle. So R3 equals the quarter circle. Quarter circle minus the minus R1 and R2. Minus R1 and then minus R2. Yeah. So quarter circle, firstly, we have a quarter and then times pi and then the r right here is four so we have four square okay so that's r3 the, that's a quarter circle and then minus r1 which is four pi over three and then minus r2 is four pi over three and then minus I feel like I'm doing something that's like re redundant. Why is this happening twice? Is there a fast way to do that? This is like a rounded, it's almost like a rounded circle because when I do R1, wait, what? What? What's this? Oh, 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 if I add this and that, it's two of them. Oh, oh it's two of these. It's R1 plus R2. Yeah, 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 never mind, never mind. So, yeah, let, let me just erase the blue wedge. Okay, so we have that. And then the rest is, okay. That's 16 divided by four, so it's four pi. And then minus, 4 pi over 3 and then minus 4 pi over 3 and then plus 4 square root of 3 okay the numbers are okay I will multiply by 3 so this right here will be 12 so we have 4 in the front so 12 minus 4 is 8 minus 4 is 8 12 minus 4 is 8, minus 4 is 4. So all these three terms with the pi, we have 4 pi over 3, and then plus 4 square root of 3, and then multiply in by 4. So we have 16 pi over 4 plus 16 square root of 3. And I believe that should be the answer. Let me double check. of them and then minus the area of the equilateral triangle is square root of 3 right? square root of 3 over 2 right one half times base times height wait 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 wait, wait. one half times base times height oh, oh this is the square root of 3 over 2 times height yeah so we have to multiply one more four. Yeah, so it's that good. Yep, I think this will do it. I think this will do it. Right, so this is it. I don't know how I did on this. So maybe if you guys are watching, okay. You can just kind of go through this and let me know um, if I make a mistake or not. If I did, I'm sorry. But once you let me know, I will make another video just for that question to, you know, to show you guys how to do it. Especially for the, uh, the cumulative. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah.
All right, as you know it, as always, that's it.